the apex body of private real estate developers in the country recently announced that it has no choice but to raise prices of homes and apartments by 10 to 15 percent. The reasoning given by Credai leaders, the cost of construction material like steel and cement has shot through the roof. Today on The Property Show, we tackle the question, will home buyers be willing to shell out more? And is there a way to shelter the impact of rising prices? Joining me, Baman Irani, Vice President, Kridai National. We also have with us Ravindra Pai, Managing Director, Century Real Estate, and Sahil Vora, Founder, Sila Group. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me. And Baman, I'm going to uh, dive in straight away. How much have prices risen of construction material like cement and steel? And... Are there other costs that you are concerned about? Yes, uh, Manisha. First of all, cement and steel prices have raised construction costs by around 25 to 30 percent. And when you look at, you know, all across the country and not particularly Mumbai in, 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 in isolation, you will understand that this 25, 30 percent is almost like uh, five, six hundred rupees, right? Uh, and if you have this five, six hundred rupees increase, the rates don't go up. Uh, in, in, in tandem with this. Secondly, Manisha is not only cement steel, it is also the petrol and diesel prices that have gone up, which makes it more and more uh, expensive for every item that we buy. So uh, given this situation, uh, Credai has made an uh, announcement that very soon the developers would be forced to, and this has got nothing to do with the profits uh, increasing uh, for the developers, but they would be forced to, just taking into consideration the cost increase that is taking place, uh, have to increase prices. Mm -hmm. Ravi, what about your company? I mean, I received a press note which says that your company has recorded the highest monthly residential sales ever in October and these are for luxury projects and ready to move in homes. Uh, could you raise prices uh, in October compared to let's say what you were charging in 2019 and 2020? So my question is, haven't prices already started rising? Manisha, thank you for having me on the show. Uh, well, you're right. I mean, our company has done extremely well uh, in the last one month. And I suppose this is uh, true for most developers across the country. Uh, the numbers, of course, for us reflects both plotted development as well as luxury apartments. Uh, so, I mean, plotted developments in Bangalore, of course, the sales have been good. Uh, but coming to uh, luxury apartments, what we've really been seeing is that, fortunately for us, most of our projects were close to completion. Uh, people were able to see uh, pretty much the development, which was, uh, you know, I mean, in the apartments are close to handover. And because of this, we were seeing good demand. But having said that, I mean, we've been very, very conscious about not raising prices because the, the elasticity to price rise and sales is very, very high. Any increase in price will lead to an automatic decrease in sales. So we've kept the prices, especially in the apartment segment, fairly constant. Mm -hmm. So that's my question. Sahil, uh, you know, we've started clocking good demand for homes and everyone is predicting a housing revival. But India is a very price sensitive market and Ravi has just kind of confirmed that. Uh, will a price rise, which seems inevitable, I mean, unless developers shrink their margins even further, if there is any room for it, will a price rise dampen this buying momentum that we've started seeing? Yeah, thanks for having me, Manisha. So, um, Yes, a price rise, a sudden price rise, uh, 10 to 15 percent will dampen momentum. But if it's done in a gradual manner over a few quarters, uh, you know, two, three hundred basis points every quarter, that is something that the market may absorb uh, project to project, micro market to micro market. But that is something that the market may absorb without significantly dampening sales. On our projects that we're doing and we're in uh, we're developing in South Mumbai in the luxury segment, our focus has been on velocity of sales. So uh, from our individual book, we're focused on, uh, you know, um, velocity of sales as opposed to taking price. At some level, I do agree with what Bauman said, uh, you know, the, the cost inflation is real. So we will have to slowly and gradually start passing on price. But right now, the focus is on velocity of sales. Velocity of sales, everyone's still concerned about that. No one wants to dampen the spirit. I'm going to actually look at how prices have moved in the last 10 years of uh, real estate in some of the top cities. So we're going to start with the national capital region. Here the annualized returns have been 7.8% per annum oh, between 2010 and 2021. Hyderabad has seen about 7% annualized returns. Bengaluru market has been lower at 5.8%. MMR at just 5% and Kolkata 2 at the same number, Chennai 4.5% and Pune 4%. So if you look at all of these markets, only a few have managed to give you returns 
which are higher than inflation, which has been about 5%. So these are the markets that we are looking at and saying there hasn't been, at least Baman to my, I'm looking at the price appreciation and the, if I look at the charts, most of the appreciation came between 2010 and 15. So last five, six years has been a much flatter curve. So if velocity is, go, is the big concern, how will you raise prices and uh, not dampen the spirit? So it's, it's, it's quite easy to say that we should not raise the prices. And ideally, I would agree with uh, both my fellow speakers that, you know, we've got to focus on the momentum of sales and try and keep the velocity high. But there comes a time when you're just not being able to, you know, match the curve of the price increases. Uh, Manisha, you should also uh, remember that the compliance on our industry has gone up many fold. And with, with the coming of Rera, which is very, very good, I should not be misquoted, uh, the compliances have gone that much higher. When that happens, there's a cost to that as well. So the 5% that you're mentioning in Mumbai is actually taking into consideration all of these things. And again, over there, Manisha, I don't think all of Mumbai has gone up by 5%. You're talking of certain uh, markets, especially Thane in the apartments, are much Thane smaller. has been much better than, uh, you know, central Mumbai, which is a luxury and premium market. But I haven't spliced it too much right now. Overall, the view yeah. is that prices haven't risen much more than inflation. And in some markets, it's actually just kept up with inflation. Yes, that's true. And uh, you have to remember, Manisha, like I told you, it's not only the compliance, it's also the people. We've, we've started, you know, getting more and more skilled people, bringing technology in. We are hoping in the long run technology will control the prices or help us control prices. But as of right now, there's a lot of investment going over there. Uh, developers are working uh, on the same margins or rather slimmer margins than they did before. And I think uh, given the increase in prices, uh, and one more point I'd like to add out here. Maharashtra has been particularly very fortunate that the government has decreased by 50% uh, the premiums that are payable. And that is what is keeping us at a, at a stable uh, price right now otherwise the prices would have already risen mm -hmm. so i'm looking at uh, you know some more data and saying to myself ravi that look prices are pretty much a market function it's demand versus supply right so again and what your inventory overhang is for the first time i'm looking at the top 14 cities data and uh, seeing a slightly healthy number on inventory overhang or the market units which are unsold still that's come down to about 23 percent supply in between 2019 and 2021 we're going to show you has actually been lower than the demand of units or the sales of units Ravi when do you think that the pricing power will come back or you will be comfortable saying look market dynamics have now turned in the favor of developers and we feel confident of raising prices is it going to be in 2022 or when Manisha I think uh, in the last three years uh, you know our industry I think has been affected most and this is not just the COVID even prior to COVID I mean uh, Bowman talked about the compliances RERA, GST, demonetization you know so many of these uh, policies have really affected our industry quite severely the other thing that we have seen is that while you can say that, uh, you know, I mean, sales are good, market is picking up. What really I notice is that like a market like Bangalore, the number of units has not really gone up. The market is constant. What has really happened is that the new supply is really not coming to the market or a lot of consolidation has happened where many, many developers have sort of exited the market. And hence, uh, you know, I mean, the sales for people who are surviving seems to be doing well. Now, having said that, I think this price, real, price rise is real you know, and construction prices have risen anywhere from 15 to 20 percent. I think this issue is more serious in a market like Bangalore, you know, where margins are much thinner. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, in a market like Bombay, where prices are upwards of 15,000, a 300 or 500 rupees price rise may not mean much. But in a city like Bangalore, where we are dealing with sales prices in the range of 5,000 to 8,000 rupees, this is a significant increase in prices. So we are obviously working on thin margin. Velocity is the focus at this point of time, there's also a, a matter of the cost of capital, right? I mean, many of us are servicing uh, debts which are fairly high cost. We need to ensure that this is taken care of. You know, I think, but given the overall, overall macroeconomics, you know, I mean, considering that the interest rates are low, uh, I, I, I'm of the opinion that, uh, you know, I mean, the lending rates, you know, will start coming down. I honestly believe that in the next three to four years, it's really going to be time for real estate. I mean, markets are going to go up and I think good developers, good quality projects will start being able to command high prices. Mm -hmm. So you're saying that some pricing power is likely to come back. That's how I'm summing up what you've just said. Uh, 
interest rates you spoke about it subhaman this is a question i'm going to toss to you seems like we are with inflation uh, rearing its ugly head you know central bankers across the globe will have to sooner than later start raising rates which means this fantastic home loan rate that we see historic lows are likely to change and you know uh, will, that is another thing which affects home buyer sentiments do you think that being the biggest headwind that the industry must be prepared for as we enter 2022 manisha interest rates are sector wise you know being priced right if you look at real estate we've been saying it for the longest period of time with a uh, near zero delinquency you really should be looking at this sector a lot more positively and the very fact that our sector is driving the gdp by almost 9% is also a, is also a point where we need to consider that the interest rates even if they there is an inflationary trend they need to be controlled on the on the housing loans at least if not for developers i would say even for developers because with the advent of rera there are none of those fly by night developers with all developers getting a lot more how do i say this uh, you know employing employing professionals and, and and using the best methods there is there is really a change in the scenario i think the interest rates need to kind of take into consideration all of this and our sector needs to be kind of um, given a higher status and a lower interest rate government i think today keeps asking the government to step in and probably give some relief on gst and input taxes on the input goods do you think that's even a valid demand at this moment the government struggling for funds sahil i doubt that there's going to be any gst respite on at any end commodities or real estate per se yeah it seems it seems unlikely but uh, you know as uh, as baban pointed out uh, an example a case study being maharashtra where the government reduced premiums significantly over uh, you know post covid and even a stamp duty reduction that really kick started demand so i think if that is used as a case study for other markets uh, across the country that could be meaningful not only for the government collections are also at an all time high on stamp duty and other levies that they have so it's a win win for government and the real estate community and the buyer who's you know because of these reasons not seeing the price increase up until now that uh, that has been talked about so there are few levers the government can pull in different states uh, as we've seen in maharashtra manisha gst is uh, you know being charged at 5% on the real estate industry without input tax credit is absolutely against the fundamental uh, theory in which gst was kind of uh, coined Uh, i think this is something the government strongly needs to look at uh, we need to understand the impact of gst alone on your uh, low cost housing and uh, once the government i mean is ready to accept that situation i think we will see a further uh, control in the prices at least we say well, 18% gst on all our materials and we get we get no in the, no no input tax credits well it is a valid demand but let's see whether the government will comply or not but on stamp duty i think it's a sitting duck that one can state governments can look at reducing it uh, and accelerate or keep the momentum going gentlemen thank you very much for joining me it's an important discussion inflation is not an easy thing to tackle for anybody and right now it's biting the industry and sooner than later it's likely to bite the consumer as well